Hey Rem community, it's Maddie, and this is going to be a comprehensive video covering everything you need to know about tags. Tags are an essential part of RemNote and include a lot of unique linking features and have endless workflow options. So I'll first go over the basics of tags, their behavior, how they work and what they do, and then I'll touch on some of the power-ups in RemNote. So tags are rem that are linked within your database. They allow you to connect different rem together or create new documents, which plays along our theme of everything is a rem. So any rem can be tagged, whether it's text, flashcards, images, or videos. So let's go through a few examples so we can see their behavior in action. Today I'm in nephrology class, learning about some kidney stuff. We're learning about the different types of kidney stones. There are calcium phosphate stones, calcium oxalate stones, uric acid stones, struvite stones, and cysteine stones, quite a few of them. And since there are so many different types of stones, I think it'd be a good idea to have a rem I can refer back to that includes all of these ideas. So I'm gonna tag them with kidney stones. To do that, I'll type in two hashtags and this tag search portal will appear in blue. From here, you can either choose an existing rem uh, or create a new one by clicking this button here or using the hotkey command plus enter. So for demonstration's sake, I'll create a new one. All tags will be displayed on the right hand side of the rem, as you can see here. And I'm gonna use shift and click to open this document in a second pane so you can see actually what happened. Anytime you create a new tag, what you've actually done is created a new document in RemNote. It would be identical as going to the sidebar, clicking the plus sign, and choosing new document. The only difference is that documents you create using the tag search portal or the reference search portal uh, will also receive the tag stub. This just lets you keep track of all the rem you created in this way. So now at the bottom of the document, you'll also notice another search portal showing one tagged rem. If you expand this portal, you'll see the rem I just tagged up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and tag the rest of the stones with kidney stones. And as I tag them, you'll see the number in the portal will increase, linking all the kidney stones to this single rem I just created. The search portal beneath that says find text references will scan my entire knowledge base for other instances where I've used kidney stones before, so I can see how all my notes are interconnected. I can even link those rem to this document by using tags or references. Definitely check out the references video for more on how those work. So that's one example of using tags to categorize different ideas under the same umbrella term. So later in class, we start discussing cancers, specifically renal cell carcinoma, which is a pretty nasty cancer and definitely a concept that I struggle to remember much about. And to help me develop a better understanding, I wanna assign some tags to help me link it to other parts of my knowledge base. There are tons of different cancers in the body and I've been tagging them all with the tag malignancy to have a single rem where I can study from and compare all the different cancers. So let's tag this one as well. I'll do that again by typing two hashtags to bring up the search portal. But instead of creating a new one this time, I'm just gonna find malignancy and select it. Again, I'll use shift click to open up this tag in a second pane. And you'll see all the different cancers I've tagged and they're all linked to this one document. So using tags this way is awesome because it allows you to connect rem without worrying about which hierarchy they come from, especially if they have multiple hierarchies but are still relatable. I'm also gonna tag renal cell carcinoma with perineoplastic syndromes since it sometimes generates hormones like erythropoietin. So I can link together all my perineoplastic syndromes and I'm also gonna tag it with the rem need to know. I tag all the rem I struggle to learn with need to know so that later on I can open up that document, expand all of my weak areas, and do a custom study session of only the most challenging topics I need to learn. And then once I feel like I have a good grasp on those concepts, I can just remove the tag. So you can tag REM with as many tags as you want and really build a rich knowledge base. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit and go over power-ups in RemNote. 
which are tags with unique functions. They have the same behavior as other tags in that you can apply them using the hashtags to open up the tag search portal and choosing which one you want. And they also create their own separate REM documents that you can use to keep track of all the different REM you've actually tagged. So all power up REM have this little up arrow icon beside them. And this just lets you know that they have an additional feature. Some power ups are automatically applied, like when you highlight a REM or change the header size, which you can do by using hotkeys or typing in forward slash and then typing in header or highlighter. In order to make the editor less cluttered, by default, most of the power-ups won't be shown on the right side of the rem. But if you want to see them all the time, you can go to setting, editor, and toggle the show power-up rem tags. All right, let's talk about some of the power-ups you can use. So first is alias. The alias power-up is a pro feature, but it allows you to use multiple names to link the same rem. The suspend cards power-up will suspend all the flashcards nested under a particular rem. Super useful for removing cards from your queue that you no longer want to see. Tagging with automatically sort will alphabetize all the children nested under a rem. You can tag templates you make with automatically add template, and this will automatically add all the slots of that template whenever you apply that template. You can tag rem with edit later as well to move them into the edit later folder. Now this power up is normally applied while studying from your queue, but if you wanted to use it for any reason while working in your knowledge base, you totally can. Extra card detail is one of my favorite power ups. You can tag any child of a flashcard with extra card detail. Then whenever you study that rem, the extra card detail will also appear along with the answer to your flashcard. And this works for all types of flashcards and you can tag as many of the children as you want with extra card detail. So regular ones, multiple line, list rem, closes, and even image occlusions. So I'll just quickly show you what that looks like by studying this document. And you can see that all the extra card details show up underneath this line here. And finally, the to-do power-up will add a checkbox in front of your rem which is helpful for project management or task management. You can also use control plus enter to toggle through slashing the to-dos. So something that all tags and power-ups share is that you can open up that rem in its own document, right? Because everything is a rem. And from there, you can actually view all the places that you've ever used that tag in the past. There are a few other power-ups like custom CSS, document sidebar, but you don't need to tag any rem with these ones. You can just open up the document to view their properties. So I won't cover them in this video. But all right, those are all the essentials for using tags. Hope that helps you organize your thinking and link all the items in your knowledge base together much better. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in another video.